as we have been hearing already, millions of pensioners in England and Wales will lose their winter fuel payments under new plans announced by the Chancellor. Yeah, Nina's been looking at what it could mean for you. Nina, morning to you. Big yes, change. it is a big change. And, you know, quite often, you know in advance about these, either deliberately or otherwise, the news trickles out. But I think it's fair to say yesterday... This took most people by surprise. Yes, good morning. Rachel Reeves said she needed to make urgent cuts to help fill a massive black hole in the public finances. Among other things, then, those changes to winter fuel payments. Now, that is an annual payment made to those born between September 1958, aimed at helping with heating bills. Now, the scheme isn't going entirely, but from now on, it'll only be available to those receiving means-tested benefits. Now, that directly impacts around 10 million pensioners in England and Wales. The policy has evolved in Scotland and Northern Ireland, so it's unclear at the moment whether things will change there too. What it does represent, though, is a loss of up to £300 for those households. Now, some have long argued that very wealthy pensioners should never have been entitled to that money, but others say this is a worry for pensioners on tight budgets. We were really surprised and quite shocked by this announcement. We uh, feel that it's far too short notice for older people to prepare for. The winter is just around the corner now, and we know that many older people plan their budget very carefully. Um, we're concerned that the appropriate levels to help people pick up the additional credit, and credit benefit really aren't in place. Um, so we're really concerned about this as a, a short-term response to something which really needs much more longer-term looking at. But the Chancellor argues that winter fuel cuts will save £1.4 billion, although that's a small dent in the £22 billion black hole that Rachel Reeves claims Labour inherited from the previous government. So, gone too are some big rail and road projects like the Stonehenge Tunnel and the scheme to reopen railway lines. But there was some good news for public sector workers, soldiers, nurses, police officers and teachers seeing pay rises of around 5% and doctors have been offered a 22% rise over two years. These are significant decisions, but what can we read into what might come next? Well, over the election campaign, the Chancellor pledged not to raise taxes for working people, but some economists now say the writing's on the wall. It's quite clear from looking at the numbers in the statement, uh, we had this £22 billion, pound of extra, uh, billion pounds worth of extra spending pressures um, they have made some savings, like the winter fuel payment, that will partially um, fill gap, that gap, but there's quite a significant gap still to come. So I think we can assume that there will be further tax rises, absolutely. Also yesterday, the scrapping of plans to cap social care costs. That's something that will affect millions of families. So the Conservatives now saying the government is paving the way for tax hikes at the budget... That happens on October the 30th at Ben and Sally. There's some analysis going on at the moment about who knew what and when about the extent of the hole in public finances, but this will become about the Conservatives saying they misled you during the election campaign and Labour saying, no, we didn't, because we simply didn't know just how bad things are. We can put all of those points to the Chancellor, who was on the programme at around half-past seven this morning. Nina, thank you. Thanks, Nina.